All right, now let us take a look at the division of two decimal numbers, okay? My first example is there is a decimal number 0 0.015 to be divided with 0 0.03, okay? So the rule is still the same that first I'll divide these two numbers as if there is no decimal present, okay? So 15 divided by 3 will be 5, correct? Now let us take care of the decimal part. So what I notice is that I have three decimal digits in my dividend and I have two decimal digits in my divisor. And in division, what we do is we subtract the number of decimal digits that are in divisor from the number of decimal digits that are in dividend. That means three minus two will be equal to one. And those many decimal digits should be present in my final answer. So what I see here is that the result of this division was five, right? So I have to have only one decimal digit in my final answer. So I will put a decimal here and this becomes my final answer. The key point in decimal division is that you have to subtract the number of decimal digits that are in divisor from the number of decimal digits that are in dividend. But sometimes there could be a little bit confusion when we subtract the number of decimal digits, right? So let me show that with the help of this example. Let's say my first number is, and that's example number two, by the way, and my divisor is 0.0000, there are four zeros and then there is one five, okay? So following this method, if I were to take this approach, I will say that first I'll divide these two numbers as if there is no decimal present, okay? So 45 divided with 15 will be equal to three. And now we count how many decimal digits are in the dividend, it is three digits here, and my divisor contains one, two, three, four, five, six, six decimal digits. So if I were to subtract the number of decimal digits that are in divisor from the digits that are in dividend, it will be three minus six, it will be equal to negative three. And so you will wonder that, how will I have negative three decimal digits in the final answer? Well, the way to handle negative when you get this result is, you add those many zeros in your final answer and that becomes your final answer in this division, okay? So sometimes I've seen students making some mistake because it gets a little confusing when you see that negative three as your number of decimal digits in your final answer. So the alternate approach you could always take is that, so let me make a little room here to explain what I need. And I have there a number 0 0.045 to be divided with 0 point and there are four zeros and one five, okay? So I can always convert these numbers into their equivalent fraction, right? So 0 0.045 becomes 45 over 1000, right? Divided with another number and that is 15 over, there are four zeros and two digits, there are six digits, so I will have six zeros in the denominator, right? Now what we can do is we can convert this division problem of two fractions into their multiplication problem, right? So I'll write the first number as it is, and then this division sign becomes a multiplication sign, and the number that is the divisor, this fraction, it gets inverted, right? That was our method that we learned. So now my new number here is six zeros in the numerator, right? This was the denominator. It goes in the numerator because I'm writing the inverse of this fraction, 15 over 1 million, and 15 comes here. Now you carry out your multiplication and get rid of any common factors in this product of two fractions. So let some cancellation begin. Three zeros will cancel, and 15 can cancel out with 45, and it will be three, correct? Now your final answer is three times 1,000, and that will be 3,000, right? So this is the same answer that you have obtained as above, okay? You could adopt any one of these methods, whatever gets you result faster. But sometimes when you have more number of decimal digits that are in the divisor, it could get a little confusing when you see this negative three that we saw in this example. So to avoid that confusion, we could always adopt this method that Convert your respective decimal numbers into your respective equivalent fractions and then you carry out your calculations, okay? Now let's take a look at one word problem to better understand this concept as well.
So our scenario is this that in a recent sales improvement efforts, Samsung dropped their prices on their latest smartphone, let's say it is S by 15%. If the discounted price is $680, what was the original price? Okay. So let us model this equation. Let's say my original price is equal to, let's say dollar P units. All right. And the discount that is being offered is equal to 15% of the original price, right? Or you can say that my discount is equal to P times 15% and that will be 15 over 100 or you can say that in decimal form it is 0 0.15 times P, right? If that is my total discount on the original price, that means my final discounted price will be the original price minus the discount and that will be P minus 0 0.15 P. You can take the P out of this equation and you get 1 minus 0 0.15 and this will be equal to 0 0.85 times P. So this is my discounted price, right? And we know that, and we know that the discounted price is equal to $680. That means 0 0.85 P is equal to $680, right? And to find the price P, you have one equation and one unknown. You can simply solve it. And you can say that this will result into P is equal to 680 divided by 0 0.85. All you're doing is basically you are taking this factor 0.85 from the left hand side of the equation to the right hand side of the equation. And when you transpose these numbers, if it is in multiplication on one side, it becomes a divisor on the other side. And that's exactly what we have here, correct? So let's solve this now. I will say that there is a whole number being divided with a decimal number. So I'll rather follow the approach of that convert that decimal number into its equivalent fraction and that becomes 85 over 100. And now this is a very typical division problem in which what we are going to do is we are going to keep the first fraction or the first number as it is and the division sign becomes a multiplication sign and we find the inverse of this fraction, the one which is in the divisor and then we say that it becomes 100 over 85. So as we solve this math, what you see is that 85 will divide 680 evenly and you get 8 here. And finally, your answer is equal to 8 times 100, which is 800 and that's in of course dollars. So your original price is equal to dollar 800. Well, the key point in this example was to be able to find this equation and then to be able to divide a whole number with a decimal number and you solve it by converting the decimal into its equivalent fraction and that's how you obtain your final solution. So this is all about the division of two decimal numbers.